Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So just a refresher on what I just talked about, dollar-based, if you're bullish on the dollar but you don't think there's going to be much volatility, you might want to sell puts or put spreads because you think there won't be that much volatility. If you're bullish on the dollar and you think you're going to, that we'll have more volatility, uh, if it's a dollar base, then you might want to buy calls. Uh, if it's dollar quote, well, then you might want to sell calls. Or if you're bullish on the dollar and you think there's going to be more volatility, you buy puts. So any kind of options product, you're really thinking two different ways. You're thinking, A, what, what do I think of the underlying investment? In this case, of course, it's dollar versus another currency. And the second part is, what do I think of volatility? Is it going to make a big move or a small move? If it's a small move, if your assumption is a small move, well, another way to trade these is to use an option strategy called spreads, where you might want to buy one option and sell another. So let's just say that you thought the dollar was going to rally against the Canadian dollar maybe a couple months out. Uh, but you were concerned about volatility and the option premium that you might pay. So what you could do is buy, let's say, the 101 call and sell maybe the 103 call. Uh, then, let's say you paid a dollar for that. Well, your risk reward would be that you could make a dollar or essentially lose a dollar. How do I come up with that? Well, since the width of that spread is two points and I'm investing one, well, I could make two. I risk one, I could make one. Now, if, if the currency pair of the dollar goes straight down, can't lose any more than my original investment. So that's sort of a refresher on options. Calculating the ISC pair values, the exchange rate is multiplied by a rate modifier, creating that ISC pair value. So you got to look at the exchange rate and then we modify it. So here's some examples. So for instance, if I'm looking at US dollar Canadian, might be trading around parity. I mean, I think today it's around 101. The last week it went as high as 107 in that crazy market, but we're back sort of at 101. If you think that uh, it's going to break parity, you might be buying puts. When you look at that exchange rate, you just multiply it by 100. So 1.0032 becomes the tradable number of 100.32. So we have 100 calls. We have 100 and a half. We have... Um, 101s, we have 99 and a half, 99s, and so on. Uh, and so you can go through all these. Most of them are multiplied by 100. The yen, we do not modify. So if you look at dollar yen at 93.12, it's just 93.12. The peso, we actually multiply by 10. So if the exchange rate, I was just down in Mexico last week, uh, and the exchange rate was about 12.24 when I was there, well, the ISC pair value is really 122.44. We multiply that by 100. So it's as simple as that. So here are, here are a few charts. I took this from uh, LiveVol uh, just a couple hours ago. This is interesting. You see during the credit crisis, this is dollar against Aussie. Now, you remember, you can trade the Aussie two different ways. You can trade it at the... Uh, quote currency, or you can trade it as the base currency. So here it is as the quote currency. So if I'm bullish on the dollar, and again, charts are, uh, I think a lot of you know, are more of an art than a science. So some of us might say, oh, we love this chart because it's on a five-time bottom and for whatever reason. And then some of us might say, oh, no, um, it, it might break and it's going down to whatever, you know, 95 or I mean, that's up to all of us to decide what is your methodology. So I'm not here to talk about that, uh, but here's the chart. So however you look at the markets, you might want to look at these charts if you believe in that. At least even if you don't, it's nice to look what other people are looking at, uh, and you might uh, form a, uh, an entry point into the currency market. So obviously the dollar was much stronger last year or uh, 2008, weakened through 2009. 
Now, remember, this is dollar against the Aussie, no matter what's happening. It's interesting, even though the world economies are supposedly strengthening, um, the Aussie dollar is not strengthening that much. In fact, the U.S. dollar has been strengthening or stable since last October, so it's interesting. So here's another dollar-based. Uh, here's the dollar against the Canadian. Dollar surged against the loony at about 107 last week, traded down to about parity of around 100. Uh, and uh, again, some of us might say, oh, I want to sell at the blue line. Uh, that, move, that declining moving average, and of course, if anybody was into uh, implemented that strategy, it probably would have worked pretty well last week, selling it around 105 and a half, 106, it would go to 107, and now it's back to 101. Um, some of us might think that it's bottoming there at 100, and you might want to be a buyer of calls or call spreads. So, how you implement it is up to you. Again, this is LiveVol, it's really cool stuff. If you're interested, go to their website, livevol.com. Here's dollar yen. Dollar yen, of course, down quite a bit from the heady days of uh, 2007 when it was trading 125. Um, now we're down in the 93 range. Uh, it's traded as low. In fact, it, it, the dollar actually weakened substantially last week, uh, but now we're trading at whatever 92.77. So there are calls and puts available on the yuck. So you can see the symbol CDD for the Canadian dollar, AUX for the Australian dollar. That's the U.S. against the Australian. Some of the currencies have multiple conventions. So we have UM, which is uh, the spot sort of way that you could trade the Australian dollar, which is Aussie over U.S. This is U.S. over Aussie. And Canadian, you can only trade it dollar against the Canadians. So that's CDD. Uh, dollar yen, the yen only trades one way, that's the quote currency, so if you were bullish on the yen, um, then you'd be probably looking at puts. If you're bullish on the dollar, you think this is the value is going to move up, you'd probably be buying calls or call spreads, something like that. You could, of course, sell puts too. Here's the Swiss franc, and the Swiss franc is um, against the dollar. Um, there's always two ways to look at it. The dollar is strong, which means the Swiss franc is weak. So the Swiss franc was strongest last November, and ever since then, the dollar has been pretty strong. In fact, it's rallied back at least half of what it lost uh, over the last year, so the dollar is definitely uh, much stronger against the Swissy. Dollar against the peso, dollar not that strong against the uh, Mexican peso. You see sort of that declining market. This is dollar against Mexican, trading 124. Options are out there also. PVO is the uh, ticker symbol. And that's very important. You need to type in to your brokerage account that symbol, SFC, YUK, CDD, AUX. That's what you would type in. So let's look at a couple. We went through the base, US dollar as the base. Now let's look at as dollar as the quote. We have four there. We have OM, we have EUU, we have GBP, and we also have NDO. So it's Australian dollar, euro, British pound, New Zealand dollar, all as the base currency, uh, and they're all multiplied by 100. So you come up with a $92 number, 133, 150, oh, 133. Wow. Um, I built these slides uh, about eight weeks ago. So you can obviously, we're trading much lower today, and you'll see this in a second. So British pound, when I put these together, is 152. Now it's 146. The pound is weakening. Remember, you think in the terms of the base currency. The base currency here is the pound. The pound is weakening, so puts would have been the right way to play this one, of course, if we had thought about this in November, December, January. Euro, well, what's the euro doing? The euro is weakening. If the euro is weakening, then puts are the way to play it. So uh, let's go back to my original 133. If we look at 133, well, that's right there in March. Of course, we broke down in the last two or three weeks from 133 down to 125. And that was probably near the close today. New Zealand dollar not moving all that much, trading around 71.58. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, 
please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.